Hey you and welcome. I'm Mr. Barry. In this whole video, I'm going to go over the James Webb Space Telescope, some of the images there, and compare those to the Hubble, and also look at a website that actually allows you to compare the two. Now, some of the things that you may not know, for example, is that the deep space image here that we have from Hubble, that took two weeks. And the image from the James Webb Space Telescope, well, that was done in a matter of hours. So the amount of data that this telescope can bring in is just phenomenal. Not just the individual images, but also being able to see further back in time, to see galaxies that are 13 billion light years away or more is just phenomenal. And not only that, but can also detect the different gases that are actually in those galaxies and it can actually focus down very narrowly to individual stars in other galaxies. Which is just mind-blowing amazing. So we're going to look at this website and actually be able to compare the Hubble Space Telescope with the James Webb Space Telescope images. By the way, those images were done in five days, all the ones, and, and it wasn't really even a uh, a real science mission on these is basically just a testing phase for this telescope just just seeing what it can do you know click 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 there and see what it looks like and just in those few snapshots you can actually see already a great improvement so let's take a look at at those and also I will have the link to that website down in the description of this video well let's take a look at these you and I come on so here's the web compare website and we're going to start with the southern ring nebula and so this is what hubble would see and this is what james webb sees and let's go full screen here it's just amazing <laughs> the difference between these two and how much can be seen you can see all the dust these puffs of dust here and ionized gases these are actually very large not little puffs but just the detail here and Hubble really doesn't see it you see a little bit right up here but now look another cool feature is that you can actually zoom into these so that's there again there's Hubble and here's James Webb <laughs> it is amazing the detail here. Look at this. You can even see galaxies back here. Here's one thing I wanted to mention too, was if you look at the stars in the foreground, you notice that they have these six points, and that's because the mirrors of the James Webb has these six sides to them. So uh, that's why you're always going to see any bright objects that really have that bright glare to them. You'll see very distinct shapes there, that six points coming out of each star. And here's something interesting. Look at this galaxy way, way in the background and another galaxy right here. And more galaxies. You can actually see these galaxies way in the background of this one image. In fact, there's galaxies everywhere. Let's see what the Hubble saw. The Hubble saw nothing back there. Wow. You can really see, look at all the galaxies. And nothing in the Hubble. Wow. Okay, so at their web page here, the web compare page, you notice at the top it says view all images. That will let you see basically uh, smaller portions of the images. But let's go scroll down. And you notice here's the first four images that the James Webb had released. Let's now go with the Carina Nebula. And let's zoom in. 
There's Hubble. There's the James Webb. The Hubble, by the way, sees everything in optical light, whereas the James Webb can go into the infrared or near infrared uh, light spectrum. And that's why I can see through a lot of this haze. So here's the haze that the Hubble sees, but the James Webb sees right through it to the stars and galaxies that are on the other side of that haze. It's just amazing. A nebula is a giant cloud of dust and gas in space. Some nebula come from gas and dust that's thrown out by the explosion of a dying star during what's called a supernova. Other nebula are regions where new stars are being formed where the dust and gas is actually collapsing upon itself through the force of gravity. Next, let's look at the deep field. So remember earlier we talked about Hubble's first deep field photo that was actually taken back in 1995 and released a year later. Basically this is the deepest image of the universe ever taken and it took 10 days for Hubble to create this image and it actually reveals about 3,000 galaxies in this little tiny patch of sky. And the James Webb telescope only took 12 and a half hours to create this image here of the same part of the sky. One thing that really stands out is these odd shapes for the galaxies. Those galaxies are way in the background and their light is being distorted by what's called gravity lensing. And so as the light passes near these galaxies that are in the foreground or closer to us, their shapes get deformed, get misshapen there uh, through gravitational lensing. And so that's why you see all these strange shapes there. Here's a star in the foreground, and of course you have that lens flare with six uh, lights or six flares coming out of it, and that's because of the shapes of the mirrors on the James Webb. And here's an interesting fact. The image that you're looking at, if you wanna know what part of the sky it is, it's basically a piece of the sky the size of a grain of rice that's being held at arm's length from you. And so if you're looking up at the sky, it'd be just a little tiny speck of the sky there that you're focusing in on. And James Webb focused on that for 12 and a half hours and got a much more detailed image than what Hubble did in uh, using it for 10 days there. That was the deep field. Next, let's go to these four galaxies here. Wow, look at this detail scene here. This really goes beyond my imagination as far as what can be done with a space telescope. Hubble, James Webb. Just right here, this, this detail right there. Hey, so there you have it. It was really kind of neat to see the, the differences between the two. Uh, one thing that really stood out to me was just that the magnification is actually different on the James Webb telescope, meaning it's far more magnified in there. So if I really, if they showed it to, to what the uh, telescopes can actually do, one would be, you know, the, the Hubble would be kind of 
small there and then all of a sudden you're looking at a little tiny piece of that with the James Webb so didn't want to mention that and um, if you like these types of videos please click on thumbs up comment down below because I love reading your comments so if you have an idea on maybe a future topic for the videos or something like that go ahead and leave that down in the description and also I'll be leaving you with some of the newest memes comparing the Hubble with the James Webb well I'm um, have fun with those and uh, thank you again and bye bye.